Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a video on uh, Rhino uh, tutorial, just basics of it basically, just kind of going over the basics of it and how um, to use it. So we're really going over just the interface and maybe a little bit of actual modeling, but most likely just um, ba most likely just interface and very minimal basics. That's uh, um, what I'm going with. Sorry. Thought I had a hiccup. Anyways, so I opened up the program here, and um, so you're starting with usually you open up with these four views: uh, top, front, right, and perspective. Um, you usually model in perspective. Um, that's how I do it. You can in the perspective viewport. So um, I usually use top for just drawing on top of stuff, and then the and to see in top view like my object. Uh, I usually don't use these very often, but sometimes I will if I'm taking sections from a, a model that I have. <laughs> That's a good way to use these. But for the most part, you're going to be either using this one or this one. So, um, yeah. So, to get started is, I usually like to maximize my viewport on the, por on the view I'm working in. So, if I'm working in top view, I would go to top view and double click this. And then now you're in top view. And then to get out of this, you double click again on top of it. So I usually work in perspective, so I would double click perspective. Now to actually move throughout the viewport and CC cleaner, you can calm down now. 65 gigs of space, I should probably open that. Um, another uh, way to, sorry, I got lost track. Uh, a way to move through your model or your view, uh, you can use these um, orbit and pans, you saw I used it before here, and then as I here. So the way to do that, the way to orbit, is you literally right click, and then you can orbit. That's as simple as that. So you you literally can orbit once you just hit, if you hold down right click. Now for pan, it's, um, you can do, it's shift, and then right click. So it's the same thing just with holding shift instead. So hit shift first, then right click, then you can move around the model. Then you can do pan, rotate, pan, rotate, and you just kind of get a feel for it. Um, and zoom is literally the scroll bar, so you literally use the, uh, the scroll wheel on your mouse, and you can actually zoom in and out. So usually in combination of this, you can get in any place in the model that you would want to. Um, yeah. So they're just kind of spinning it. I'm just showing you guys like in combination of how I would use it. If I was orbiting around, let's say, this origin and wanting to articulate that object. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the basics for just moving throughout your model. I'm going to go over a little bit on the toolbars here. So, the toolbars here are just... Um, are just ways of executing commands. Now, there are two ways to execute commands. You could either click the buttons on top of here... Or type. I would highly, highly recommend doing typing. Uh, doing typing will, like just typing out the command, whatever, uh, I just kind of type stuff, uh, will save vast amounts of time. Com like so much time. So I would recommend typing. That's the way I model, and that's the way I think everyone should model in Rhino. My opinion, of course, but uh, that's how I think. Um, so yeah, go f uh, just try the type method, just typing out your commands, things like that, instead of going to the buttons. Because to find the buttons in the exact command you want takes forever when you could just really type it. So if I want a box, I literally type box, and it would create a box. So, um, so yeah, uh, you can do type. Uh, the only ones I really use in terms of buttons is this one, which is zoom select. So... If I have that box again in my viewports, like right here, if I want to select on that again, I would click this and then do zoom select, and then I have my viewport or my model. So yeah, and then there's these other ones here. I really don't use them. These are almost unusable, like not unusable. These are not useful. You just type them out. Trust me, that's the easiest way to do it. Now, um, I'm gonna go over this part. So this is the properties. You really don't use this that often, except when you're using the clipping plane command. I really don't use it this often. Um, yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. It just tells you kind of 
information about the viewport you're in and then the target and yada yada yada. You can also make a wallpaper. Um, you can turn this off and then uh, show. But you don't need to do any of that. Trust me, this, this is mostly aesthetic. It's not really um, anything modeling wise you need to know. So uh, yeah. So we go on to the most important one I think is the the layers tab. <laughs> Now this is really useful, like it's it's probably the most useful part of Rhino as well as the kind of ease of commands. You can literally type out, instead of just, I mean like, oops, sorry, for layers it's really nice because you can kind of organize your work. So if you want to show a different work, so if I'm going to draw another box, uh, and like this, let's say about that height. Let's say I want these though, um, to see different ones. I could literally just, um, in order to move something to a layer, <laughs> You would literally go, you would uh, go and click on the object that you'd want. Right click on the layer that you'd want it on. So I want this box on layer one. Right click, and then do change object layer. And I'd literally change the object layer. And same thing for this one. So let's say I want this one on layer two. We repeat it again. Click on the object you want to make in your layer. Right click on the layer you want it to be. And then change object layer. And now it turns into the color that you have um, here as well. Um, if you want more layers, you can also click this button. It's a new layer. So I just made like a series of layers. And uh, if you want a different layer from that, let's say you want something, you have an object, but you want it in a sub layer, you click new sub layer. So it's like, let's say chair, and then you would have legs. And then you can click new layer here because you're in the sub layer. You can do legs, seat, um, armrest, or oops, uh, armrest. I don't know. Just, just uh, that's how you would use the kind of layering system in here. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the layers. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And then the check mark right here is showing which one it's current. So if I make an object, it will always be on the default layer. You can change that by double clicking any layer. So if I want something made in layer five, I double click it. Now, I really don't use that feature that often. I usually keep it on default and then just uh, click the object and then change object. Um, it's usually not that hard, uh, but sometimes it is nice if you know that you're gonna be working in a layer for a long time to double click the, let's say layer three and then work on that for a while. So yep, that's pretty much it for layers. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, we're going to go on to the these um, kind of panels, kind of the lower bar of it. It tells you a little bit of information, what model units you're in, and then what layer you're in. Now, these are useful. Um, usually, I have all of these. Um, ortho is sometimes on. I interchangeably turn this on and off. Uh, planar is nice. So, I usually keep all these on. Uh, planar, O-Snap, uh, Smart Track, and Gumball. Uh, I haven't used record history before, so I'm not too sure, but I may try that out. I'm not too sure how handy that will come in. But you see ortho here, and then grid. Uh, grid snap I sometimes use. Grid snap is basically just, if I type in line, let's say, for example, it will actually snap. You can see it's snapping to the grids. And these are, uh, I don't know how, what the units are. Since it's in inches, I think this is uh, 12 inches right here. So every one of these ticks are an inch, from what I know. Let me try. So, I do. so yeah, it's one inch. So the command I used is distance. It's D-I-S, and then, you know, it fills out with distance. Hit enter. It says first point. So let's just do this box. And then the second point. And it'll tell me it's eight inches. So, yep, that's eight inches. That's just what it's telling me. Um, so another thing is we're, we're going to go over this again. I'm just... Want to go so the most important feature in Rhino is definitely the object snap feature. It's definitely the most useful in terms of modeling. Um, trust me on this one. This is this is the most useful. Uh, so I usually have all these on, all these ones that I have currently right now on: end, near, point, mid, intercept, intersect, intersection, uh, perpendicular, tangent, quadrant, uh, and not. I usually don't have center on unless I'm dealing with circular geometry, and what I mean by that is let's go in top view real quick. And you can also click these tabs if you want just to pan between them. 
and full perspective instead of double clicking and then going here and then double clicking. But anyways, let's go type in a circle and we're just gonna make it an arbitrary uh, radius. So if I wanted to snap something to the center of this uh, circle, I would actually go click center and then let's say I want a line. I would just drag my cruiser around it and then you see it starts to snap to the center. And I would click that and I would have my snap. And now it's snapped to the center. So yep, that's pretty much for snaps. So that's the only reason why I use center. So that's an example. Vertex, this is for meshes. As you can see, it says polygon meshes. Uh, this is project object snap and disable object snap. So um, disable, we'll just turn it off for right now. And it's literally the same thing as doing this. Uh, one more feature is gumball. Gumball is definitely a useful uh, tool because you can easily move geometry on an axis fast so you can literally so if you're like oh i need this kind of here i need this here or maybe move, move it up a little bit um really nice and you can also rotate so if you have ortho on you can rotate by 90 degrees snapping or if you don't have ortho on you can actually turn the act you can turn just kind of arbitrarily yeah, this gumball is super useful. These are scaling, so you scale by a direction like that. Or here, you would scale by that direction or, you know, this direction. You can also hold shift and it would scale it in all three axes or axes. So yeah, let me see if I miss anything. The, I usually try to make things uh, pretty easy. So, let me see, I gone over the object snaps, I'm making sure I gone over the proper things. So you have these toolbars here, you have file, you know, edit, view, all these ones. I really don't use, don't, I really don't use these. These are, these bars are basically the same as these, except for, well, render is also right here. You can go to render tools and use this, but render I use this to switch from Rhino Render to V-Ray, which I don't have on uh, Rhino 6 as of right now, so yeah. Uh, and these are panels, which show different things like the object uh, properties layers that we have on right now, so we can turn on different layers or different uh, attributes. So you can see ground plane, sun, so ground plane, we'll turn that on, or turn that off, turn that off. All right, cool. So we can turn on and off different things. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the basic interface. Uh, so yeah, guys, um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys go to the part two. I will be tr think I'm thinking of, of a way. I, I'm probably going to do modeling in terms of actually starting some basic um, tutorial on just geometry. And how that works and I want to go over the different sections of curves surfaces to poly surface <laughs> I think that's a good start see you guys uh, thank you guys for watching hope you guys have a great day bye